right, so this video is going to be about all things selections. Now, we're going to look at how you set that up in your BuildExact account, how the client chooses which items they want to select, how they propose new items to you, and things to consider when printing your quote to make sure it uh, plays well with the selections function. I'm going to go to my specifications tab here, which is now turning slightly into the specifications and selections tab. What this means for me is, as I'm doing my estimate and using regular specifications, uh, I'm going to be using the S button from the estimate costing screen, which I'm going to continue to do that. That's going to bring items through like this, and it's going to pull, say, all of my appliances into one category for the sake of presenting that on my quote. Where I want to get the client to choose on a cooktop or choose on an oven, I personally don't turn this category into a selections category and the choice to do that or not is actually made via this exclude or to share option where as soon as I say to share it, it treats this whole category as a selections category. Personally, I don't uh, go and use the existing categories to turn them into selections because uh, I find that having all of the, say, appliances um, for oven, uh, white goods, range hoods, etc., you know, it's going to be quite a long list in one big group and having the client choose from that is a bit confusing for the client and it gets a bit amplified when you've got different tiles and different sections of the house, that kind of thing. The way I found to be the smoothest for both yourself and the client is <clears throat> where there is something to be chosen, I add an extra category for that. And I essentially separate in specifications, I separate the parts that are selections against the parts that are specifications and hence we'll go on my quote. So I would go oven selection and to share, which means it's going to be treated as a selection part of the specification screen. I'm going to then go add items and I'm going to add a few in here. And with this oven selection, uh, I'm going to say, you know, the client can choose between this Miele, bright chrome, model number that, 900 mil oven, or uh, Westinghouse, bright chrome again, model number that one, 900 mil again. As you'd be used to from, uh, from the specification area, you can add photos to any of these. And as you're going through, you're going to want to do things like tell the client the price if they were to choose it. So this price is uh, basically how much is added to the quote if they go and choose it. And I'm going to say this one's $1,000 added if they choose. And this one's $850 if they choose. And I can add any extra notes about this such as selecting this item uh, will have a longer lead time. There we go. I'm also going to want to consider things like the due date. So if the client is going to select all of these things before I even sign a contract or even issue a quote, um, then the due date is going to be pretty soon and I'm going to uh, have all of these pretty much at the same time. However, more than likely, you're going to have a bit of a rolling due date system where the due date will be, let's say, a couple of weeks prior to when the actual uh, item is to be purchased. And you can manage that through each of the different categories that you're working with. I can add extra notes to say, you know, we use the showroom. Uh, items can be viewed, viewed at XX, you know, whichever showroom you want to go to. And really this can be filled out in any manner that you like. Uh, this price box can be used if you want to give them the total allowance figure that you've already made in the quote. However, typically that would be done in the quote letter via the allowances tab. Uh, and hence, I, I don't suggest that you'll necessarily be using this box here. Perfect, once you've put this in, you're gonna go up to the top and hit share, and it'll give you a couple of options. Now, a bit of a word of caution on this screen. 
If you go client portal and share, that shares to the client portal, that one's easy. If you go email and share, that actually shares a whole list of the specifications as an email. Uh, so it's, it works slightly differently to other forms we've got. Hence, just be really careful with this form. Uh, you wanna go client portal and immediately share. Now, if you make subsequent changes, so you add another group of selections, you're gonna have to go share and share and share again, uh, just to ensure that the most recent things are always showing in that client portal. So I'm gonna go actually to my client portal now and just refresh that. And you can see oven selection, I've got a due date, I've got the prices here, and I've got any notes that I added. Now, from here, a couple of things are gonna happen. The client will either go, that's the one for me, job done, or they'll go and request an item, which they can also do through this process. So when I go request an item, this is essentially the client doing it in reverse. They're able to snap a photo from something they've seen, add a title, a price if they've found one, any links and information. And really what this does is proposes it back to me and I then go, yes, no, um, I can supply from this store, I can provide that item, or maybe, no, it's not suitable, it doesn't fit, it's a, the oven's too wide, it's not, it's not gonna go into where we want it. Uh, and you can, you can work through that with them. But all this is doing is sending it back to your Build Exact account for you to then make a decision on. Awesome, let's go back to the Build Exact account over here and we're gonna go into quote letter. because so I just wanna point out one quick thing about specifications when you come to print the quote. And that is that you've got all these tick boxes. These tick boxes relate to the different exclude or shared or selected, shared, different statuses here. And depending on what you wanna do with your specifications, you may choose a couple of options here. For me, I've gone just show excluded, meaning don't show on my quote anything to do with this, the selections. That's really just something that I'm doing with the client separately via the client portal. Or you could say, actually no, show the excluded ones plus show the uh, accepted ones. And mine's gonna be right down the bottom somewhere here where it's gonna pull in then the, the winners, so to speak, um, or the ones that the clients have actually chosen. Go down again, there we go, oven selection, that's the one they actually chose. But really, the main point I wanna make is just understanding which status does which thing, and really how much of the selection info you wanna pull through onto your quote versus just having the straight specifications showing on your quote. Hope that makes sense. Any questions as always, let us know. And for the selections, um, you are able to also leave some feedback in here. So if you wanna tell us uh, pros, cons, things you, you want to uh, see with it, uh, absolutely edit, uh, absolutely add that via this button here. Thanks a lot, cheers.